Hi everybody, greetings from Canada. Sure wish I was down there with you guys instead, but thanks to everybody at the committee um, for stepping up because they've allowed me to do this instead and still get to present for you guys. Um, I just want to take a second to really thank everybody. I'm sure the conference has been amazing and I wish I could have been there, but thank you to everybody involved um, for all your hard work. And Ben, Leah, hey, uh, I really wish I was there with you guys right now. But anyway, so um, I got 10 minutes here to talk about social media and building communities online, which is really not a lot of time, so I'm going to dig right into it as quickly as I can here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I've done and then some of the things that I just think are really, they've worked for me, the most important sort of key points that maybe you can take with you and take forward into what you're going to be doing. So the title of my talk is Growing Ceramic Maker Communities Online. So here you are. You've decided to use social media for business purposes. How do you then avoid screaming into the abyss? How do you find your audience? I challenge you to think of it not as audience, but rather as community. In workshops, I often ask people to write down a list of what they believe they might find if they Google themselves. Then we actually do this as an exercise and compare what exists and what is missing, what's produced by them, and what's controlled or produced by others. It can be super eye-opening to see where your predictions fall short but it's a great exercise to start you on a path of creating the online presence you desire. The same goes for community. Step back and question who comprises your community or your ideal community. Are the right demographics accessing the content that we're producing? Are we finding like-minded and inspiring people? This is the first step in helping to create a more effective communities of practice online, ones that will support and nurture our creative and business growth. We have to build them. We can't just assume that they exist. Why is working within a community of practice so relevant? Easy. Many hands make light work. I access my communities for education, social, business, inspirational content, and first and foremost for friendship. But what is at the core of my ideology and methodology of social practice? The idea of give and take. But what does that mean? Well, do you want to be the jerk in the corner yelling for attention? Or do you want to be an active, positive, generous part of a community? It's really simple. If you want people to support you, then you better support them. Does that make me sound like a motivational speaker? <laughs> Perhaps. But a lot of the success that people find through social media is a direct result of motivation. People are hardworking every day to play a part of these communities and to give back to others so that they in turn can access what they need from the group. Passive engagement with social media will not allow you to flourish with online business strategy. Just because you built a gorgeous website for your work, handed out fancy business cards, and told someone about it, doesn't mean they'll come. And if by chance some do come, what are the chances they're going to come back? I can't express enough that social media is a daily job. It's not an eight hour a day job, not even two hours a day job, more like five minutes here and there scattered throughout your day. But it does require that daily commitment. You have to be a constant bleep on the radar of those whose attention you seek. So loop back to that idea of give and take. How can we give to our community and help it grow? Well, there's many different strategies for that, and I can't give you the answer to how you will develop your own strategy to do that. I'm lucky. Back in 2007, I stumbled upon my personal strategy, musing about my blog. If you think about it, musing is a perfect means to draw attention to myself without overtly trying to draw attention to myself. I draw attention to my actions as a proactive member of the community, trying to give opportunities to others, which in turn draws attention to my art and creative practice. Am I being sneaky about it? No, not at all. I'm actually not overly confident about my artwork, so what I needed was to find a different means to make contact with those in my community that could open doors for me. Draw attention to myself by doing or creating something of value to the community, the idea of give. Then once the door was opened, once I was already in contact and gaining respect with the professionals in my cultural sector, then I could draw attention back to my own artwork as well, the idea of take. Spend a minute making a list of all the things you would like to access or take from this community, and then make a second list of all the things on that list that you might be able to actually give to others. Be a part of the cycle. In terms of social media platforms, you can easily try them all, but you need to pare down quickly to those that work for you based on your personality and how you work. Consider also what communities are actually present on those social media platforms. Snapchat might be super fun, but if your community of practice doesn't exist there, it's pointless and it's a waste of time, and time is a precious commodity. The next question is, what are the psychological reasons that people go to certain social media sites, and how do you play that to your advantage? 
One would never go to Pinterest for news. They'd search hashtags on Twitter. Pinterest is a platform known for the fact that it's a demographic is often there to shop. They're seeking eye candy. This is where great photos of your work will drive people to you. Facebook is more about social interaction. We share posts, we have discussions, and there are great ceramic forums to get involved with to connect with others for educational or other reasons. Eye candy images of our own work can grab attention, but being that Facebook is set up as this linear timeline, once it's out of the news feed, it might as well not exist. So our efforts there, business-wise, are very short-lived. Instagram, on the other hand, currently is being used by many in the creative community as a visual sketchbook that people can go back to, a branding tool, and marketing gold. It's become an organically growing, user-based, content-driven platform wherein peer-to-peer -peer learning and new educational models are becoming apparent. The very nature of Instagram coincides with one of the key concepts I try to adhere to myself and to teach others about in social media. Tell your story. I love Instagram, and I might sound like a paid advertisement for them right now, but it's my current go-to social media platform. It's gorgeous eye candy, it's a great community of makers, it's, it's a lot of different communities, curators, galleries, uh, amazing shops, they're all there. It's a place where I can gain insight into the behind the scenes of other artists in their studios, to how they balance art and life, what inspires them, and what their core values might be. I tell my story through Instagram. It's a story about an artist. She's a mother desperately trying to get into the studio. She sometimes prioritizes a nap with a kitten over throwing pots. She's inspired by the chaos and blur of life with two young children, and her images juxtapose how her creative side and her daily life intertwine and inspire each other. Okay, but really, I show successes as much as I show failures. I share what's going on in my day-to-day -day in my studio and what's going on in my community through reposting and drawing attention to other stories as well. I share. I'm generous. I share of myself. Same way I am generous and vulnerable and I share of myself in my art practice. I aim to be generous and genuine about sharing this story. And in the end, my story, my life, become my brand. And I can't imagine anything more authentic. The elephant in the room, of course, is this idea of making money. Of having to sell our souls to market ourselves and be profitable, though, has been completely turned on its head in the last few years. Corporate marketing and advertising is even switching gears to be more in line with what is organically happening through communities on social media. It's them that are having to find new methods of grabbing our attention in a society where time is that commodity of utmost value. And what are creative people doing that's grabbed the attention of the corporate world? We've been doing what we've always been doing. We just share it more publicly now. We're being authentic. We're tired of being talked to in a way that advertising and marketing is done for decades. We're telling our story. We're showing the world through our images, through our documented actions, the value of what we do and what we create. We're not glossing things over. We're not making a pretty package. It's the dirt and grit and grime of the life of a maker. We're now able to sell our stories to different communities, to educate them about counter-corporate and counter-disposable consumerist ideologies. We're cutting out the corporate middlemen. We're taking our work directly into the homes and hands of the public. Sometimes this means cutting out the gallery system as well, which is a whole other topic of discussion about how that could change the face of art marketing and sales. Personally, I find it super exciting to be a part of society right now. So many shifts and thanks to technology are creating new maps of how we communicate and how we live, how we purchase and how we share. If I as an artist can live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, have international contacts of artists, gallerists, writers, curators, you name it, that are international and that I can contact on a daily basis, that's pretty amazing. If I can also sell out a kiln load of pots solely by posting an image on Instagram of these pots on the floor of my studio as I unload the kiln, well, that's also pretty darn exciting and motivating to get back into the studio to do more work. So what are the main things that I want to leave you with today? We've done a quick brief go over of a lot of stuff um, and it's really just the beginnings of a conversation. But what I want you to think about is the idea that community matters and playing an active role in that community is actually part of a business strategy. In terms of content, it's not just about good quality content anymore. We have to understand the platforms that we're using and we have to understand that quality content needs to be delivered in the right social media context. Remember people's time is a commodity. Get to the point in what you need to say. Make it punchy and make it relevant and give them a reason to come back to you.
Tell your story. Be authentic in all you do. That should be a given. It's about give and take. I'm asking you basically to volunteer your time for this community. We all need to work together to support each other, to comment on each other's posts, to give feedback, to give answers to questions that are posed, and to help promote each other and each other's work. Gaining exposure for artists will also create a larger value for art in the contemporary world, and we need all the help we can get. I'm not talking about preaching to the choir. Some of this is community talking to community and preaching to the choir, but there is actually a lot of it where we're actually getting the word out beyond our craft, our maker borders. So I'm going to end with that, although it's really just this brief overview or beginning, but I encourage you to join me online to further the discussion. There's so many great examples of artists out there who are doing amazing things for our community, and I would love to get together with anybody who's willing to sort of talk about that more. You can find me online very easily, and here's a couple of the links in a second. But until next time, thank you so much for letting me present. I wish I, again, I wish I was there with you guys. All the best and lots of love from Canada. Bye-bye.